way up the hill, but then drops back down where they then face the daunting task of a climb to the top of the course. This is followed by a fast, tricky, hard surface descent to the Paso del Rio and the start-finish area. The course climbs a total of 400 metres per lap and is particularly gruelling. This will be the first uh, very difficult part of the course. It's only 300-400 metres after the start. And it's a very steep, short climb where we have to run up. So it will be a big, big fight to come here first to be the first uh, rider on the top. Here we have a short, uh, steep uh, downhill. It was a little bit tricky with a sharp corner in the bottom with a lot of loose sand, so it can be some crashes here in the race with uh, when all the riders are coming. Cut. Uh, this is on the top of the longest climb, and uh, tomorrow I hope I can be uh, in the front here because it's a single track from here and nearly to the finish again, so it's very important to be in the front because it's very difficult to pass, uh, pass riders uh, here. We talked to Alison Seidel just before the race. Alison, Spain is the first start in the new World Cup season for you. You are still busy in road racing and mountain biking. How do you make it? Uh, it's basically just road racing for training now. Um, I don't really have any uh, goals on the road other than to use it for preparing for the, the mountain bike World Cup races. Why did you decide to start the new season in Spain and not in Australia for the first competition? Well, it was a really difficult decision for me to choose to miss the first World Cup. To give away an advantage right away was very difficult, but um, I had the opportunity to represent uh, Canada at the Pan American Games in Argentina in March. And uh, considering that there was a lot of traveling to get down there and also then a long trip to Australia and then to Europe, and considering the length of the season, I made a decision that I had to miss either the Pan Am Games or the first World Cup. And, because there's one world, there's only one Pan Am Games, but there's uh, ten World Cups. I uh, had to make that difficult decision. You had a really successful season last year. You didn't have so many wins in the World Cup, but at the end, you became world champion. So, what are your main targets for this season? Well, it was a difficult season for me last year, and that my spring um, performances definitely were a lot less than I had expected. And I was just very, very pleased that towards the end of the season, uh, I was performing at the level that I'd hoped to perform at the beginning of the season, all through the season. Um, I think this year the problems that hampered me in the spring aren't bothering me right now, and I should have a good spring. And uh, from there, then decide really how my focus is uh, for the remaining World Cup races. Of course, the World Championships again. You know, to me, it's the most wonderful race to win in cycling, and uh, you know that's a big objective again for next year, for this year. How was your preparation on this new season? Um, I didn't really do too much different other than, uh, you know, with each passing year you, you gain a little more experience, you refine your, your preparation for the, for the next season. And I think for me, uh, you know, each year I include a little more uh, sports outside of cycling in my winter preparation. So being a Canadian, of course, I play a little more hockey each year. So, But other than that, no, no, no real big differences, including a lot of road, road training in my, uh, my, my mountain bike program as usual. The views of world champion Alison Seidel. <laughs> Grand 
Grundig Performing Arts. 10.000 kleine Explosionen im Blut. <lacht> Welcome back for the start of the five lap, 37 kilometer women's race. With over 50 riders competing today, Competition will be at its peak to get to the climb first. This race is a special, something special in this race. For me? No. <laughs> Should it be? No. No? Okay. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so what's your tactic for today? How, how are you going? Straight in the lead? I, no, I hope not. I have no idea. You know me. Everything's great. Let's hope for a good race today. The women start off. The Tardo automatically shoots to the lead. Right next to her is Alison Seidel, world champion. He's competing in her first Grundig race this season. As per usual, they always have a heel at the start of the race just to stream out the riders. Just look at that hill, that is very anaerobic. You can already see that Sidor has pushed her way to the front. She must have a lead of about five seconds over Furtado, who likes to just be consistent in most of her races. She knows that it's a long way to go. There's first round, second place lady, Maria Paolo Tocato, followed by Sarah Ellis, Sidor's teammate. Is it Sidor's unli unlikely to lose, lose Furtado on that decline there. World champion in 1992 at downhill. She's not going to be beaten downhill. Also looks like she's pu pushing a very good big gear as well. And there's Chantal Decor, the Swiss rider, 1993 European champion. And it looks like Petso's caught for Tardo. They seem to have quite a big gap over the chasers, though. Tocato riding very smoothly. Hasn't been racing very long, actually, off-road. It was a road racer before this. Decor looking like she's struggling a little bit, followed by the 30-something-ish Sylvia First, 1992 world champion. Oh, Furtado as comfortable as ever. She really is so strong. She's, she must have opened up a 10-second lead over Petso. Surprise winner of the 93 World Champ Championships. She seems to be coming back to form. And it's noticeable how most of the women now seem to be coping really well with the downhills. They know just as much as the men that it's equally as important. The news is coming through that Caroline Alexander, the British rider, is down in the lower 20s. As Furtado cruises over the line, she's very happy. Not surprising, her second win. Followed very closely by Pezzo, the Italian. Yeah. 
And there's third place rider Chantal Decor. So that's a GT one and three today. Do you like those races much more than being in the lead and having a gap to the next one of two minutes or more? It depends on the course. Um, on real long middle ring climbs, I think I prefer to be alone because that's usually what I excel at. On a course like this, I was more than happy to stay with people and kind of hang on because, like I said, it's not perfectly suited to me. There's confirmation of Furtado's result. Only 10 seconds in front of Pezzo. And again, that's a familiar looking sight for Tardo, number one in the rankings. Catch us after the break. Next up, the dual slalom. A very short, intense battle between two riders pitted against each other. It's a very similar to the slalom in skiing and requires superb handling techniques. Aggression is the order of the day. Dual slalom is also very popular with the fans. Probably because there's quite a lot of crashes. Unfortunately, it snowed on Saturday, making the racing that much harder. But the final in the women's event came down to a battle between 1993 downhill world champion Giovanna Bonazzi from Italy and Spaniard Inez Rodriguez. With Bonazzi pipping her just at the line, wheeling over the finish. She looks very happy. The men's final was an all-Spanish Spanish affair between Klein rider Tommy Misso on the left and Univega rider David Vasquez Lopez on the right. Very fast through the turns, Vasquez Lopez just shaded it. Looking round just before he crossed the finish. At every Grundig race, riders have to put their bikes through a check to make sure they're in good working order, and also to tag them so they finish on the same bike, which is a UCI stipulation. Uh, to get the sticker, we pay the most attention on the assembly of the brakes, of course, because they are very important for the racer. And if the brakes are not correctly adjusted, then uh, he might have problems with uh, descending. So we check if the brake shoes are always in a correct position. If they are too low, then they maybe uh, move under the rim, and this, this can cause an accident of the uh, racer. So we do it for the rear and for the front. But in this case, everything is okay. And then we check the shifting performance. Could you just hold the bicycle up? We shift all the gears to make sure that the shifting is correct. This was for the rear derailleur and we do the same also for the front. Also, we check uh, if the bottom bracket is correctly adjusted, or if it's loose, and we have also uh, to uh, replace it if it's uh, not okay. And we also check the head part. <laughs> and of course, the play of the front and rear hub. So in this case, no adjustment is necessary. This bike is okay, so you get the stamp, the special sticker for it. We uh, use the sticker for the front and the rear to make sure that the racer is really using the same equipment on the bicycle and that he has not changed it during the race because this is uh, permitted. Some of you may remember actually at the 93 World Championships, Chandel to Chantal Decor in the women's race actually came third but was then disqualified from the result because she hadn't had her bike checked beforehand, much to her fans' disappointment. In addition, we put also a sticker here on the on the front page, here on the number plate. 
That's all. Yeah. Good, thanks. Now we'll take a look at first round victor, Rune Hoydal. This is my fourth year, so I had won a World Cup downhill victory before, so it was great also with a cross country victory. So what did you do for in the winter? But how was your preparation for this season? No, I don't know. This winter I've been working again. I was working for three months, October, November and December. And uh, OK, I only work for five hours a day. But uh, anyway, I feel I didn't train so much this year. I've done a little bit uh, of the training this year. Last year I was training very much with the road team, very long and uh, maybe too slow. This year I uh, train uh, train not so long but uh, harder so maybe that's uh, also one thing and also this new year I changed to a new team so maybe that's also a kickback for you. I think this uh, win in the first race must have given to you a lot of confidence now for the for this season. Is it? Of course to win the first race is great and uh, now I knew, you know I can uh, be in the top with the best riders so of course for me it's very good uh, for, the, for the rest of the season. Join us for the big one after the break. Original bike components. Grundig Performing Arts. 10.000 kleine Explosionen im Blut. A million years ago, people used to run through the woods and climb up mountains and dance in the moonlight because there wasn't anything better to do. There still isn't. Back to Manzanares for the start of the men's race. Here's world champion Henrik Jernis. I feel all right, but I've been a little bit sick after Australia. But I think everybody was sick coming home from from the heat, home to the cold. So I'll see how it goes. Daniel Pontoni, second in Cairns, is saying he just wants to finish. He's also saying that it's a course made for cyclocrossers, but he feels a little bit fluey today, like Henrique, but he's try, he's, he'll be trying to do his best. Thomas is asked also how he's feeling today. And like Pontoni, he's feeling a little sick as well. Seems like all of the races have had the flu, but he again is going to try his best. And at the start of the men's race, seven laps in total, 51 kilometers with over 100 riders. Henrik Dernis in front there. Seems like the motorbike is getting in the way of them as well. There's Tinker Juarez. He had to um, qualify yesterday, as did Ostergaard. This is up the second of the climbs, and there's Juarez. That's a very good ride to get up there. And, and number 360, Ostergaard. Both of those riders had to qualify in 40 minutes, qualifying races, both winning them quite easily. 
some riders obviously taking taking their time just twiddling up there using very small gears some running a la cyclocross some just honking what a melee and there's first round victor rune heidel he's up in the front again what a sensation and juarez my word that is a fantastic ride followed closely by Bostergaard, both those two incredible to get to the front so soon and there's britain's gary ford and david baker there's number three thomas frischnecht not feeling too good today but he's obviously up there Heidel obviously looking down to see if he's in the right gear Juarez usually pushes a fairly big gear up hills, but he's having to stop there. A little way further back is Ostergaard. It really is incredible how these races are so tight now. Riders you wouldn't have thought were up there, would be up there, are indeed up there. And there's another British rider, Tim Gould, really storming. He's really coming back to form now. And there's 90 world champion Ned Overend. He usually starts quite slowly, actually. Frischneck's still in it. Tomac, the showman. Wherever there's a camera, he's sure to perform. And who would have thought, actually, today that it'll be snowing in Spain? What a contrast to Australia. 31 degrees in Australia, 35% humidity. Here in Spain, it's snowing. It's only about five degrees as well. There's Heidel. He's just a little way off the back now. But he's back onto the tail end of Juarez, and they seem to have opened up a gap. News is coming through that David Baker is up in the teens, as is Tim Gould. Barry Clark, the rally rider, is punctured on the first lap and he's now way down the field. Barry is not having a good time. Juarez looks round. So obviously he's worried about Rune Heidel, who's using a disc wheel in this race, actually. Didn't use that in Cairns. And there's something for the future as well. Disc wheel on the front of Ostergaard's bike. It really is amazing how much bicycle technology is coming for, over from uh, motorbike technology. These three riders really do seem to have it in their grasp to win this race. That wasn't too clever from Ostergaard. He usually likes the mud of the cyclocross. Came second in 1993 in the World Championships at Metabier when the conditions were absolutely awful. Not like today. It was really wet and muddy. And there's Britain's David Baker. Along with the Frenchman, De Pouet, and 99, 1990 World Champion Ned Overend. Unfortunately for Baker in Cairns, he was lying in about 10th place when his chain broke. So he eventually finished 28th. Seems to be back in the action today. But Ostergaard look like, looks like he's struggling, as does Juarez. Unfortunately for Juarez, he seems to fade towards the end of a race. Unlike Baker and Overend, who seem to be powering away. And there's Rune Heidel coming over for his second victory on the trot. Who would have thought this would have happened? What a marvellous result from the ex-downhill racer. Brilliant result. Fabulous. He is happy. Great ride. Who's going to come in second? Could it be Baker? No, no, it's Ostergaard. Another good ride from, well, a relative unknown, really. 
1993 was his best result, third in the world. And there's David Baker, the GT rider. Fabulous result from Great Britain. Excellent stuff, David. What a ride. Una, yeah. Unbelievable, huh? Yeah, I don't know why. I was feeling so uh, strong from the start today, too. And uh, I was, uh, before the start today, I was just thinking that uh, I will try to keep the jersey to Belgium because uh, when I've been training, I didn't feel this was my course because it's it's not so technical. But it seems like the downhill today was making a lot of difference because uh, I could make a lot of time in the downhill here. There's confirmation of Heidel's victory today by 40 odd seconds with Britain's David Baker in third. And in the overall rankings, Heidel secures his lead at the top by a commanding 42 points. Join us next week for the third round from Hoofelis, Belgium. See you next time.